Okay, this example, again for section 2.1, uh, example 2, and this is on piecewise functions. So you should have printed out a handout that I had ready for you uh, called piecewise functions. Um, and then you will notice, I'm just going to handwrite some of it on here, but it should match what's on your handout. You will notice that what we have up here is how we designate piecewise functions. So f of x, that's our normal function notation. But f of x, rather than just being one equation, so to speak, is made up of two different pieces. So see how it has a little bracket symbol right here? Okay, bracket symbol. Um, the first piece is 2x plus 1, and this is valid for domains from negative 3 to 0. It includes negative 3 because it's got the less than or equal to. It's up to but not including 0 because it just has the um, less than symbol. Okay. The next piece of this function is x minus 1. And it's valid for domain from 0 and including 0 up to and including negative 3. Okay. Alright, so the first thing it asks you on the handout is the domain. And when it asks you this, it wants the, do the domain of the whole function. We just talked about the domain of some of these little, of these two pieces, but when it asks you the domain, it wants the domain of the whole function. So the least value in the domain is negative 3. The greatest value in the function is positive 3. And then we have to look to see if we have greater than or equal to or less than or equal to symbols so we know whether to put brackets or parentheses. And sure enough, there's the less than or equal to symbol next to the negative 3, so that gets a bracket. There's also a gr uh, greater than or equal to symbol or less than or equal to 3 symbol on the right-hand side, so that means that's a bracket there. You could have also rewritten it this way. In uh, inequality fashion. So this is interval notation right here. This is inequality. So unless a homework specifies or unless I specify in a test or a quiz, you can use either. But um, pretty much we're going to use a lot of interval notation. So this is the format that you're going to want to use. All right, so now we want to graph the function. Just get rid of this domain stuff here with my cool eraser tool. All right, so we want to graph the function. Well, you can see that there's two pieces, so there should be two parts to the graph. You can also look at these two pieces and notice that they're linear, so there's probably going to be two lines. Oops, I'll put that back in. Two lines. Boy, that's sloppy. So when we graph it, the first thing we want to do is let's take the first piece, 2x plus 1. Okay. So it's a line, so I want to know where to start and where to stop. So negative 3 is the smallest piece that's, that goes in. So let's put negative 3 in the function and see what we get. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus 1, that would be negative 5. So this is going to give me the ordered pair negative 3, 5. Let's go ahead and plot that. Here's negative 3, negative 5, kind of down there. And let's see, we're using a closed circle because this is less than or equal to. Alright, so now we have to find the value at 0. And why do I have to find the value at 0? Because 0 is the other endpoint of this function. The function's valid from negative 3 up to 0. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So this is the ordered pair 0, 1. And 0, 1, and I'm going to get an open circle there. It's linear. I'm just going to connect them, and that's my first piece. Let's go and do the second piece. 
the x minus 1. And we know it's a line because it's a linear function. So we first want to find the function at 0 because 0 is its smallest uh, domain. So we have 0 minus 1 and 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So that's the point 0, negative 1. And at this point I'm going to pick a different color um, so you can see that. So 0, negative 1 and it includes that 0 point so it's going to get a nice close circle there. And we'll keep the same color. So now let's figure that out, uh, the other end point for 3. x minus 1 is the function. So we have 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. So this gives us the ordered pair of 3, 2. Let's graph that one. 3, 2. Close circle because it's less than or equal to. And then I connect them. So that's the piecewise function graphed. Um, and then we want to do some evaluating here. The part C on your handout says evaluate. So we want the function at negative 2. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come up to my original function here. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. In fact, I'm going to rewrite that because I had a lot of marks on that. So let me rewrite that. And it went from negative 3 less than or equal to x less than 0. Okay, so let's go back to this one here. The function at negative 2. So come up to your piecewise function here and you say negative 2. Well, which piece am I going to use? Well, negative 2 falls between negative 3 and 0, so I'm going to use the 2x plus 1. Oops, I don't need that on there. So we have 2 times negative 2 plus 1, and neg that's negative 4 plus 1, that would be negative 3. Okay. Um, I could also use the graph, although this isn't a very accurate graph, it's just a sketch, but I still have to come up to the original function so I know which piece to use. I'm going to use the purple piece, and when it's negative 2, it should be negative 3, and you can see how sloppy my graph looks. It would be hard to get negative 3 from my graph, um, but it's it, it's close enough that we know that we've got the right value here. Alright, the next one is the function at 0. Alright, so when I come up to my piece, wise, piecewise function, oh, there's a 0 there, and there's a 0 there. Which piece do I use? Well, I use the second one because the second one includes 0. Okay, so that's x minus 1, so in this case it's 0 minus 1, and that would be minus 1. And then the last piece, or the last example there, is the function at 2. So again, come up to your piecewise function, and 2, which piece do I use? Well, 2 is between 0 and 3, so I use the second piece. So that's x minus 1 is the second piece, so 2 minus 1 is 1. So there's three different um, things that you can do with a piecewise function. You can figure out the domain, you can graph it by hand, and you can evaluate it.